All right, so guys, welcome back to another episode of Horizon Forbidden West. I just realized we have only three missions left for the main story of this game. <sighs> this game has been phenomenal. It really, really has. And I wish, even though it's been long, I wish it was a little bit longer. <laughs> There's just so much more to explore. And whether I do things here on camera or off camera, I'm going to be doing a lot of side stuff on my dead time. It's just February has been so crazy that it's hard for me to drift away from the main quest. And I'm barely finishing this game on time. Um, but anyhow, let me change my outfits because <laughs> as cool as this is. Yeah. Oh, wait. Holy crap. This is a, a purple. Very rare. This is better than most of my outfits. What the heck? Oh my god, that's hilarious. Okay, so um, we'll go with this one. Actually, you know what? We're going to go with that one. And we're going to add, which we haven't. I don't know why. I'm an absolute moron. We're going to add some... Uh, melee defense. Sure. I always get smacked around with the melee, so I figured why not, right? Anyways, uh... The next quest for today's video is called Gemini. And it says with Omega clearance secured, Gaia should be able to subdue and capture Hephaestus. We're headed back to the base, which is <laughs> really far away. Believe it or not, I had to run and travel most of that. On foot, partially, and the other one by mount. And, and, and it took me uh it took me a really long time to do all that. So yeah, we're here. Dude, this outfit is so sick. I love the cape on it, too. It's so wavy. Nice. By the way, the server rooms. There was something in the server rooms that... Gaia had said... I don't know if this is the way to the server rooms. This, this place is a freaking maze. Apparently, it tastes worse the longer it takes to be delivered. Looks like someone's made this space their own. Huh. I see you found Varl and Zoe's room, Aloy. I believe they wanted private accommodations. I see. <laughs> oh, y'all been, been doing your thing in there, huh? You better not be coming out with another infant this way. I had to exile your ass out of here. Just for your information. Elite vertical trap. That's cool. Okay, so this is that room. Elite purge water. Dude, all of these things are crazy. There's Gwen stuff in here now. Must be all of us. Alright, it's time, guys. Enough is enough. Enough waiting, damn it. Welcome back. Let's get it. Aloy, I know your experience in Thebes was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport you to Gemini? The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network, increasing its power. But with your subfunctions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. What if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? 
Only a final test remains. I am confident that if fired in proximity to other cauldrons, the pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. <laughs> Aloy, you better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. What happened to her? Dude, this outfit is freaking sweet, dude. I swear. So the old ones painted their faces with something called makeup. But makeup. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you guys hear that? That's awesome. Makeup. Aloy. What's up, dude? Uh. Aloy, do not open the door. I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. <laughs> Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one. We need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back? Alone. In a cell again. A slave. Forever. Find your courage. The only way we can end the risk of that happening is by stopping the Zenus for good. And in order to do that, we have to get Hephaestus. The Zenus are a threat to everyone, Beta, not just you. So find your courage. That's easy for you to say. You still have no idea what they're capable of. I told you from the beginning we'll never beat them. It's hopeless. Beta. Leave me alone. You don't understand. You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. I don't know what you have that I don't. I look through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned and isolated just like me. So what's the difference? What's my defect? Probably Ross, man. I think that was his name, right? But it has to be him. We were, we were raised like a warrior in a way, if you think about it, from the first one. <laughs> oh, man. Beta. You don't have a defect. Oh. That's sad. Ada, look, it's not a piece of Elizabeth. The difference is, I had him. <laughs> Frost. He raised you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. Oh, man. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did he feel like? Oh, man. It was like... Having the strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. But it looks impossible. Look deeper. And then fight like you can win. It's 
I miss Ross, man. He was such a good character. You don't have to go on the mission. We'll find another way. I'll go. You're right. I'll only be safe from them when we succeed. There you go, girl. That's right. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes. Of course. If it goes bad... If the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise? I promise. Must be crazy. Use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merch, to make it as efficient as possible. Should have been doing that before, damn it! I was gonna say that must be crazy, like having somebody that's like a clone, just like I'll you. I'll be ready when you are. And like talking to them. I swear. <laughs> like having a twin, but even more than a twin. They're, they're practically a clone. It must be insane. Aloy, whenever you are ready, come speak to me, and I'll ask the others to make final preparations for the mission. Alright. It's time. Hello again, Aloy. Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel, I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. So, about Beta, I never really saw the difference between us, until now. She's been through so much, completely alone. You have both endured many hardships, different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobeck. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. <laughs> How's Katalo doing? I have detected that the loss of his arm still deeply pains him. In an effort to remedy this, I have discussed a potential solution mm. with him. I believe he will want to fill you in on the details. A solution? I'll check in with him when I can, then. Oh, that's cool. Maybe like a bionic arm or something. How are things around here? Zoe has been studying the morphology of her land gods in an effort to understand their sickness. Without the abilities of Hephaestus, I am unfortunately unable to correct their programming. However, due to Zoe's perseverance, we may have found a workaround. Zoe will want to fill you in on the details. Okay. Sounds promising. So our plan to capture Hephaestus. Let's go over it again. As you wish. Thanks to Beta's test, we now know that Hephaestus will not respond to your Alpha clearance. Which is why I got Ted Pharaoh's Omega clearance. Correct. While you were gone, Beta constructed the transport rig and pulse generators. When we get to Gemini, I will need to be installed on one of the facility's cores. The second core is for Hephaestus. Using Omega clearance will allow you to trap it. 
And then you'll be able to absorb it. Not quite. You will need to manually remove Hephaestus' malicious code before the merge. Oh, man. How long will that take? Because the work will be split between you and Beta, it will take approximately 4.5 hours. And during that time, the others will create a distraction for us using the pulse generators, right? Correct. They will each take position at a cauldron door and fire off their device. The energy surge should mask our activities until the merge is complete. And then we'll have everything we need to defeat the Zenus. Sounds like a plan. So now that you have Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon, how's the biosphere looking? In the local region, conditions have improved. Superstorms have subsided. Water sources have been purified. And soil conditions remediated. These improvements will stave off environmental collapse for a few additional months. Well, with luck, soon you'll have Hephaestus. Then you'll be able to fix the biosphere for good, right? Correct. I will be able to design and produce robotic agents to permanently reverse the environmental damage that has accumulated. There's something I've been wondering. How could Ted Farrow create a clearance level higher than Alpha? Elizabeth made sure he wouldn't interfere with the project. It is plausible he tasked his own engineers with creating a backdoor to the Zero Dawn system, without Elizabeth's knowledge. My predecessor did not even know of its existence until he activated it to purge the Apollo database. It is, in effect, a blind spot. One that will allow us to subdue Hephaestus. Beta believes the Zenus want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. But why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago, wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment oh, here. That's true. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. Their own personal playground. So the Zenus are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith. It is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. Given enough time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. Like how Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh Plague. Exactly. Ted was trying to make himself immortal. Didn't end well for him. Mm -hmm. For every success? There are many more failed attempts. Some more grotesque than others. So from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. Always. 
I think I actually chose that question before about the old world. So this facility, the regional control center, it was meant to oversee the terraforming system? For the local region? Yes. Had humans received their education from the Apollo database, they would have then been guided here to assume operation. As that never happened, this place remained vacant. Until Minerva decided to settle here. So the Hades Proving Lab, where I found the Gaia Colonel, it used to be a Pharaoh research facility? Yes. Prior to appropriation by Zero Dawn, the facility was used to engineer and test advanced computer viruses. It appears to have been one of many research initiatives by Pharaoh Automated Solutions. I guess it wasn't enough to build automated killing machines. He wanted viruses to infect them with too. All right, let's get down to business, bro. Okay, people, it's time to head out. I'll get everyone together. Oh, shit. We got a little squad and everything, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I just hope nobody here dies, man. I'm gonna be mad if somebody dies. Somebody's gonna die. What am I? What am I even saying? Someone always dies. And I just hope this song is very beautiful and all, but I hope it doesn't get me a strike. Just saying. Oh boy. That outfit is badass, man. Let's go, Beta. <laughs> she actually came. He's holding on to dear life, but she's here. Which is what matters, I guess. All right, connections in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy, I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice. Hmm. Aaron, everyone, fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my Cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mm. Mine as well. Okay, radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. <laughs> Connecting to the cauldron network now. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence. Get ready. Here they come. 
Before I'll stay here. Protect Beta. All right, hold on. Got it. Be careful. Got this girlfriend. Stay back. Yo, what the? Freaking behemoth. Get back. We got this. Oh, you're weak against poison. Eh, you don't fucked up, man. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The arrows of Varro was just throwing at me. So help me out. Excellent. I think I can gather that stuff back there. Is that the uh is that the weapon that it had in its back? Damn, it's not. We're all good, so you that's what okay? matters. Still breathing. Aloy, Hephaestus can't escape, but it must have fled deeper into the facility. I'll drive it back here. I'll get the cracked core fixed in the meantime. Keep her safe, Vol. All right. Keep it going. We gotta go that way. All right, hold on. Sorry, I had to check something out. You were saying something before I left? All my life. Oh. <laughs> That's why I didn't update? Are you kidding me? Because he had to say, on my life. Oh, gosh. That's, that's hilarious. Oh. At least we could trust him. He's a good dude. How do we get out of here? Chase after Hephaestus. Force it out of wherever it's hiding. Make it retreat to the core. Notice how they're giving me a lot of stuff here, man. Uh, how how do mushroom how do mushrooms even grow here? This is all like Alright. No, you don't, Hephaestus! I'll find another way over. Yeah, that's pretty creepy, my boy. into your focus feet. You should know there is a huge power draw coming from the next chamber. Thanks for the heads up. I'm almost there.
Oh, hold on. So I can just jump here and jump on the ledge. Perfect. Oh, snap. You got some goodies here? To use an unlocked weapon technique, uh, tap R1 when aiming to appropriate. Okay. Kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right. What what kind of machine is it trying to build? I don't know. But I'm gonna shut it down. Because even carriers will lead me to where it's getting materials from. I bet that's where Festus is hiding too. Alright, so what the hell do you want me to do here? Really? My Oh man, oh man. Okay. Let me see. Where's my loot? I guess I'm here. Let me get all the supplies that I can. I don't know if we're gonna come back here. But the game is hooking me up right now for a reason. Yeah, that's all I know. I'm gonna take full advantage of everything that I that I that I can spot here. One more mushrooms uh, or berries, I guess. Those don't look like berries. <laughs> Probably gonna be able to. I can get it from my stash. Oh, we can't do anything with that just yet. So I think we have to follow. Yeah, we have to follow the convoys, but I think we have to grapple onto them. Oh, there's actually a passageway there. All right, never mind. Fair enough. Excellent. You know what? I'm actually gonna craft some health potions. Not enough room in your potion pouch. Thank you for the bullshit. I gotta find where Festus is hiding. Looks like there are a couple of places. Well, that doesn't sound good. Lot of stuff. 
stuff here as well that we can, uh... There we go. That we can loot up. Maybe perhaps even some components that fell down. Yep. Like that one. Let's do a... I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little lap around the facility. Got all the stuff that we need. These things have been uh, have been sent to my stash, which is totally fine. I mean. Here we go, baby. Did we do it? Yes, perfect. The other man. Oh, more machines. Oh, great. Machines on the way. Beta! Hephaestus has locked me out of the node. Any ideas? I'll see what I can do. Poison trap one. I got them all. 
Oh. I tapped into the core's network hub. I managed to disrupt Hephaestus' control of the node. You should be able to override it now. Nice. Thanks. Alright, good. Well, that was a little bit more annoying than I hoped for. So let me just see if any of these guys dropped anything. I think I've got everything for the most part. So oh, here we go. to another chamber. Well, I better not get comfortable. Alright, so now we can go through here. Right. This is probably the other chamber that we were looking at earlier that we couldn't access. <sighs> Great. Festus covered the floor with lightning. I gotta find a way over it. Aloy! More machines keep coming! Please tell me you're getting close! I'm working on it. I've been smashing through a lot of machines on my side, too. I guess Aaron's missing out! Aloy, I'm making progress on the bypass, but I, I need something to hold the cycling module together. Maybe a ligament from one of the machine carcasses? Right. O or some luminous braiding. You could reinforce it with a conversion cylinder. For increased connectivity! I, I think... I think we can do this, Aloy! There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Oh man, these stupid robots here too? Oh my god. I don't know the robots can actually, uh, the machines, excuse me. They can actually, same thing. I didn't know they can actually walk on the electricity. Huh. The question here is now, how the frick? Oh, wow! All right. To try the out of here. There should be another note to override. Got it. Dude, I didn't even see that one. I swear to God, I didn't see it. I didn't see that one. I don't know exactly how many machines we technically have here, but I think it's more than the other place. I think we may have two more to go. But if I have any that I can take out silently, that's even better. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, here we go again. Uh, oh, that doesn't sound good. I'll try to get your access back. Alright. Let's go have a crack at it then, bitch.
biatch. <laughs> I'm right here, bitch. All right, nice. Hold on. Lost Rider. Sheesh. Good work. Alright, there's a lot of loot here that I wasn't able to recover. There was too many machines. I'm gonna do that right now. Hephaestus can wait a little bit, okay? I, I, I need... I need me some resources. Just saying. Those claw striders are really tough, man. Like, they'll hit you once and... Man, if you get caught hit in the wrong spot at the wrong time... You're done. They do a lot of damage. Okay, so we have here... Hold on. That ought to do it. Okay. This is running out of places to hide. Uh, Aloy? I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. She never first is something. You must have finished it. Powerful. Whatever it is. I'm almost done with the core repairs. Should we come to you? Maybe I can distract the machine if... No, Baylor. Just stay where you are, okay? And then the machine's locked. Okay. Be safe. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? I should scan it first. Things on its legs are glowing. I think it's charging up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Finish charging. Oh my god. Oh. I'm not giving up. Hey, yo, chill the fuck out, man. Going up against a fucking Spinosaurus. Wow, this is fucking nutty. Hey. 
nice dodge. What a nice fucking dodge. I'm literally going up against a Spinosaurus right now. This is unbelievable. I'm about to destroy a Spinosaurus. It's gonna kill me. Die, bitch. It's done. You did it. There, there should be one more note to override. Oh. Good. Stand by. I'm sending Hephaestus back to you. Holy shoot, man. Dear Lord. Hephaestus gonna wait his little ass. I've got some looting to do. For the love of Christ. That was terrifying. And there's not like, there's no leverage here. It's not like I can hook on to anything, you know? It's not like a ledge or any of that stuff. Plain, plain, uh, plain ground, so just go in circles and hope that he doesn't come running at you. Which he did. Okay. He certainly came at me. Really fast and fierce. But we persevered. All right, calm down. Relax. Now you're excited. No more hiding, Hephaestus. Turn to Beta and Var. Got it. Hephaestus is back in the core. Nice. Make sure it stays there. I'm that heading back. It's trippy. And then we can start the march. Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Varl. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Right back at you, Aloy. <laughs> oh, this looting has paid off. I had so much, uh... So much medicine that I was able to take all that damage and survive. Just kept healing up over and over and over again. Hey, Lloyd. The, the bypass is done. The core is stable. Hephaestus is 100% contained. Nice. And we better get started with the merge. It's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. Done. Excise Hephaestus' malicious code carefully. back they're like what what is going on <laughs> something's gonna happen something bad's gonna happen Eli, look. or not it's good news yay we did it Squash that bug while you're at
Please don't kill him. Please don't kill Varro. Please, 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 please. Come on! Quit screwing around! Now we're we'll having fun, right? No! You mother fucker! No! <laughs> He was gonna she was gonna kill her. She was gonna... Finally. Tilda, get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. She would have killed her. She wouldn't have been her slave. Tilda! I failed. Hush. All is not lost. That's Tilda! Tilda. What the hell are you doing? That's right, that's Tilda! Remember, she was different. Oh, dude, but they killed Varro. Oh, dude, man. I hope that she revived him or something, man. That dude cannot be dead. Beta. Fucking Varro, man. Varro. Where are we? Where am I? Ah, you're awake. You took quite a hit when Gerard attacked you. I imagine you must still be in a great deal of pain. I can assure you that we are safe. The others can't detect us here. You mean the other Zeniths? You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've... shaken off the cobwebs. When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. What the hell? Breakfast. <laughs> Girl, you crazy. Man, dude. Bro, Varl is dead. You have got to be fucking with me right now. Where are we on the map? Let me see. We don't know. <laughs> Why did Tilda bring me here? Oh, dude, we are about to uncover some really, really deep stuff here. What was all this for? Some kind of survival bunker? What is this? Oh, this is from our Just world. Just a few favorites from my collection. There's an Rescued artist. Rescued and stored here just before I went off world. Take a look, if you like. <laughs> I'm curious to hear your impressions. My friend is dead. Beta and Gaia are gone, and you want me to look at old paintings? Don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art. Or the insight we might gain. Examine the art is optional. My favorite pairing on the left is Woman Reading a Letter by Vermeer, a true master. And on the right is a forgery, Woman Reading Music, which fooled experts into believing it was a priceless original. Early in my career, I became fascinated with such deceptions. Eventually, I developed scanning software that could detect fakes with unparalleled accuracy. Is that how you made enough money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Mm -mm. Oh no. I made my real fortune later. Selene and Endymion. She's the goddess of the moon. Whereas he's a simple shepherd. 
Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's sneaking up on him? More like visiting him in secret. <laughs> The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. Wow. <laughs> That's a beautiful analogy. Holy crap. This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Mourning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. So instead, he saved its treasures from destruction, just as I saved these works. You could say we're kindred spirits. I like this, man. This is really interesting. A portrait of the painter, Rembrandt's son, Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you with infinite resources, care about this painting of a boy in a hood. It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined, but his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune. And the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. Oh boy. Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day. But not as influential as you've been in this new world. The Gust by Willem van de Velde, the most famous of his many maritime paintings. A ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Stunning, isn't it? Paintings were the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's leaded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial? Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. A lot of weight on his shoulders. I don't feel it. She's pulling out her own hair. Out of madness, out of grief. Done so soon. I've got more important things to worry about. We both do. There is much we are trying to save. Not the least of which is in that vault. There's nothing wrong with savoring such treasures for a moment. There you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it 
It rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta in the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done? You think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them, and live with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. My old focus. You repaired it? Whoa. But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life. Huh. A thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to. In order to understand, to be enlightened. You truly are. Elizabeth's blood, with her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. This is getting interesting. We must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship, a complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted. Heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them, create the world she imagined. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. And they're not yeah. invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh, he's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Regala and her rebels. Even now, she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh the capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Hundreds of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow silence to kill him. Along with all the others. Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man. He's planned for everything, except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while Silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it.
Wow, dude. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. They always viewed me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the data channel. A virtual place where we could speak in peace. So this channel you shared with Beta, none of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes, though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. Well, she felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone. To think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set mm. course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me, Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. Hmm. You hacked his focus? No, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the sons of Prometheus. By tapping them, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh rebels, and the secret pact with Regala to attack Gerard's base. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but however he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it and the Tanakh army, victory seems to be within his grasp. 
It's such a shame he'll be disappointed. Okay, there's more questions here. What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know your exits. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation, a passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here, in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Hephaestus. What about the Alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery, once the others have been dealt with. With that in hand, we'll have everything we need to make this world as it should be. Regala is only interested in killing Hikaru and waging war on the Karja. What does she have to gain by attacking Zenith? It's the price she must pay for her war. Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. Pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet, for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. That blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? This was... Everything she was, I see in you, and more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning. A touchy subject in those days because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation. But in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step, an AI-driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming, but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence to care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated and I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. Hmm. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her, then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't, <laughs> but she was very welcoming. 
almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only halfway through the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets, and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape, bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. Wow. You'd be dead. Wow. So I should be grateful. If you like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, kinda. So you know all about me. What about you? What would you like to know? Hmm. Well, start with your life on Earth. When I was eight, terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian sent me to boarding school. Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You are an outcast. But you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries. Profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? More like a service one could turn to for information. I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Far Zenith approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Far Zenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were. Certainly, it, it wasn't until we were off planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy 
could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying, a pampered dream state. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again, but this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now, finally, having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. To do what? Help you, of course. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Farzina's original vision. A better future for humanity. First Farl. Now Hikaru and the Tanakh. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. Hmm. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deeper. Huh. Wait. The data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible. We might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakh survive. But we won't. If the others... If you want to help, open it. What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? Watching me. I, I, I can't hold up this extra protection for long. You should have killed me. Hmm. No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Okay. I just need you to hold out a little while longer and work on the merch. again when it's time. Can you hold on? As long as I know you're coming for me, I can endure anything. All right. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silent's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? <laughs> With Aragala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? <laughs> that is between me and my sister. <laughs> Let's go, my well, sister. Well, the silence only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh. And what are those? 
Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regala's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh. Whoa. The ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if, when. Erend, are you there? Aloy! Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... At, we're, we're back at base. What happened? It... It might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. I, we'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. Wow, bro. Oh my goodness. All right, so guys, we're going to call it quits here. We'll be back shortly. Thank you so much for watching. The ending is upon us. We've got about two more missions left. And uh, that'll be it. But phenomenal, phenomenal episode. It's like every episode just gets better and better. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will catch you on the next one.